Hello, everybody. Well, I just uh, saw something and heard about something rather disturbing about about over a hundred kids at a school in North Carolina, and many of the teachers came down with a, a severe stomach virus or some kind of a stomach bug that made them very ill. You know how a stomach virus is, right? Pretty nasty stuff. But what's frightening is that at school, hundred over a hundred kids and several teachers all at once got sick. And so these so-called government doctors and government agencies, you know, that are investigating this rampant outbreak and they made a remark that maybe the kids were at a church when they got sick. And this makes me think about, in these last days, how us Christians, especially the true Bible-believing Christians, are going to be blamed for all these things. Like how people blamed us for Ebola and blamed us for other stuff and all these other bugs and viruses and sicknesses that are becoming more rampant in these last days. But this makes me study into Matthew 24 to understanding why us Christians are being blamed in the last days. And this is what Jesus has been warning us of. He said this to his disciples and to all us Christians that all the way up to the last days, you know, we're going to be suffering this. He's been warning us, so this is what it says in chapter 24 of Matthew, verse 7 through 13. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall... Then they... Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then many will become offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that in it shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, Jesus warns us that our true Bible-believing, living-for-Him Christians, that in the last days, we're going to be blamed and persecuted. Christians have been getting persecuted ever since the beginning of Christianity. Ever since Jesus rose from the dead and all of us and all this, ever since the first churches. But, in the last days, it's going to get so bad that Christians are going to be hated and betrayed by those that they thought they could trust. Basically, when all these disasters of the last days start happening, these pestilences and sicknesses and famines and just diseases start ravaging the planet, and people start becoming sick in large groups all at once, then they're going to look to the Christians and think that, oh, these people must have went to a church or a youth group or some kind of a church gathering, so that's why they're sick. And of course, the corrupt government, the system in which is stripping rights away from us Christians, of course they would say that. It's prophesied in the Bible that these things would happen. So us Christians that are living today, you need to be praying for a spirit of endurance because you may think that you're not going to be persecuted because you so-called live in the United States or some other so-called comfortable country. Well, I'm telling you that Christians' rights are being stripped away. Look at this country. Us Christians, us Bible-believing Christians, we say anything against abortion or homosexuality or against 
our constitution being violated and stripped, we get labeled as haters, we get labeled as criminals, as terrorists, as all these horrible titles that people throw at us. It is exactly what Jesus says in the last days. Iniquity is sin pattern, severe sin pattern, like rampant sin. People are going to be living in their sin to the point where they're going to, they're going to grow cold. So, if they have anyone that they love and care about that is a Christian, some people are going to be so into their own world, into their own sin and iniquity, that they're going to betray their own people for being Christians. It happens all the time. Nobody wants to listen to the true Bible-thumping Christians in the last days because they want to have fun and do their own thing and live in their iniquity and sin. So their hearts are going to wax cold. They're going to become cold-hearted. They're going to betray us and kick us to the curb because we stand up for what we believe in. Even though us true Bible-believing Christians, we're not the ones that go out and hurt others, but we'll be blamed for the suffering in the world, even though it's the sin that's bringing on judgment. God's been warning us all this time that sin brings on death and it brings on judgment. But yet, people don't want to repent. If they would just repent, then God would heal them. God will spare them. But people don't want to listen to God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and to those of us that believe in them so great. So, and yes, if you are a Christian and you truly want to serve Jesus Christ, then you need to pray for a very, very, very serious, strong endurance because you may think you're living a comfortable, cushy life but I guarantee that if you are living for the Lord, there's going to be persecution. So please don't slack off and think that you can just wait until the very end to make things right. You need to make things right now. Otherwise, you won't be able to endure the increasing persecution. I'm just telling you folks that in Jesus' own words... People are going to hate us just for serving Him, just for loving Him and, and, and being Christians, being true Christians. But He also says that if we endure until the end and we serve Him until the end, then we'll be saved. We'll be rewarded and we'll be taken to paradise. So even though this world may treat us bad and people may hate and betray us, don't lose heart, my brothers and sisters in Christ, because our reward will be so much far greater than this world could ever give to us. Yeah, people serve the world because they think it's the easier way to go, but they don't realize that that's the wide path to hell. The straight and narrow way going to heaven is not a very easy path, but in the end, you'll have paradise to be with the Lord forever. But if you choose to serve the Lord and indulge in your sinful iniquity, then you will be on the wide path. That seems like it's an easy freeway, but it's going straight to hell. And you're going to regret all the Christians you've persecuted. You're going to regret all the times you laughed and scoffed and kicked someone to the curb because they want to live a Christian life and they try to warn you in these last days. People need to choose wisely in these last days and they need to pray for a spirit of endurance if you consider yourself a Christian. This a minute, this a minute.